Divine Truth Assistance Group. These group assistance sessions are about putting principles of divine truth into action. This discussion is part of the Texas USA 2013 series. The topic is Basic Principles of Progression. Presented by Jesus on the 9th of November 2013 in Austin, Texas, USA. This is session one, part one. All right. If we can start with Angela. Thanks. Thank you. Um, earlier this week, well, I guess we've been here a couple of days, but um, I guess it was maybe yesterday, um, you had mentioned in a conversation that we were having that um, I was carrying my stepfather's shame. And so my question is, um, with regards to that, because I haven't really, uh, I guess maybe been able to access too much shame, or I guess I don't know what it looks like, or... Mm -hmm. So I was hoping that you could address that and... Yes, certainly. Yeah. I feel shame is a big issue that a lot of people need to face and I'd love to address the issue of shame. Um, here we're talking about shame that comes from sexual abuse. So put it into context of sexual abuse in your childhood and there's shame related to sexual abuse in the childhood. But obviously shame comes from all sorts of things that have happened in our childhood where we were shamed by other people during our childhood. So let, let's describe what's happening a bit. And um, usually there's a person, an adult, so, who when we were a child did something to us. And in the case of sexual abuse, they sexually abused us, obviously. So sexual... Let's, let's use the uh, situation of sexual abuse, but it could be violent abuse. It could be to do with personal violence from the adult to the child. And it could be to do with even um, humiliating the child verbally and emotionally all the time. So all forms of abuse we're talking about here, whether it's physical, emotional or sexual. But let's look at the form of sexual abuse. Now, usually when this adult abuses the child in any way, whether it's violent, uh, uh, physical, emotional or sexual, the adult tells itself that it has nothing to be ashamed of. In other words, what the adult generally does is it blames the child for the adult's actions towards the child. So, for example, when the child is hit, violently abused, the adult says, it's your fault that I'm doing this because it's something you did. Does that make sense? So the adult blames the child. When the adult blames the child, this has the effect of creating openings inside of the child where the child thinks that it has something to be ashamed of. In other words, it believes, the child believes, that it is the problem. It has the shame. It is the person who is, has the problem. Does that make sense? Because the adult has taught the child to believe such things. All right. So whose shame is this really? Can you see it's not really the child's shame? It's a feeling that exists in the child of shame. But it's not really the child's shame because the child didn't abuse itself. The adult abused the child. So it's really the adult's shame that the adult has refused to own and refused to take responsibility for and now blames or projects that emotion onto the child. And because the child, being a child, doesn't have the ability to easily determine what is right and wrong within itself, it then thinks that it must be wrong, that the child has been the problem. Does that make sense? But this shame does not really belong to the child, it belongs to the adult. Most people have huge difficulties 
feeling shame. And yet, if they realise that almost all shame that comes from your childhood is not your own, but rather somebody else has projected at you, you would probably allow the feeling of shame to come up more frequently and to be felt. Now, there is a shame that belongs to you the adult, now that you're an adult, and that is the shame of anything you chose to do out of harmony with love. So whenever we choose to do something out of harmony with love, it affects our internal um, conscience, is that how you spell it? Yeah. And therefore, we generate, there is a generation, there's a law of compensation and motion that's generated as a result of anything you choose to do out of harmony with love that causes shame to begin inside of you. So I'm not talking about that shame. I'm talking about the shame that occurred during abuse that occurred as a child. That shame, the abusive shame, came from the adult. In other words, it's the refusal of the adult to honour that it is doing a shameful thing. Right. So whenever an adult has beaten you or so been violent towards you or sexually abused you or verbally abused you like with sarcasm and humiliation and all those things, from God's perspective, that is the adult's shame. Does that make sense? That shame really belongs to the adult but most adults don't want to feel that shame. And so what they do is they blame the child for the shame they feel. So they actually tell the child, it's you that has been the problem. You have something to be ashamed of. You made me do it. And if quite often people who sexually abuse children say to the children, you made me do this. If you weren't this or if you weren't that or if you you know, didn't do that, or if you didn't dress provocatively here, or you didn't have walk around with nothing clothes on when you were little there, I wouldn't have done it. You know, that's what they say. And many people who violently abuse their children say, you made me do it. You didn't obey me. You didn't do what you were told. You didn't whatever. And they always finish up putting the shame onto the child. But what we need to do, understand, if we are going to process emotionally, we need to understand that the childhood shame is not really our own. It's just a feeling that's now inside of us. But it, the cause of it is not our own. So it's not our own actions that created this shame, but rather the adult's actions that created the shame. The adult has something to be ashamed of, not the child. And the only time we as an adult have something to be ashamed of is when we choose, as an adult, to do something that's unloving to another person. Then we have cause to be ashamed. And in fact, that shame can help correct us if we allow, if we're sensitive to the feeling of it. Does that make sense? So, Angela, you want to take it? Yeah. Um, thank you for that. So, I don't know that um, what shame feels like. Like, is that the feelings of not feeling good enough, of... Um, like never getting it right, of not being lovable. Like I feel those feelings, are those part of shame? Well, they're often a part of shame and all, many of them are often not true. They are true because the adult told you that they're true. And you now have re reinforced these beliefs to yourself. So you know the feeling, I am not lovable. That had to have come from somewhere. Right? And it had to have come from an adult telling you or demonstrating through their actions with you that you're not lovable. That's how, where it came from. So you not being lovable is really a measure of the adult's poor treatment of you. That's why you now you believe that you're not lovable. You still need to feel the emotion, but you would probably find it easier to feel the emotion if you understood that the emotion came from the adult and was taught to you rather than believing that the emotion is your own, rather than believing that you personally are not lovable. So if we look at the, th the statement, I am not lovable, it's not a truth from God's perspective, is it? So from God's perspective, every single person who is one of God's children, and that's every single person, is lovable from God's perspective. 
In other words, every single person from God's perspective will, uh, God, God loves them whether they receive that love or not. Right? Now, the fact that we then believe we're unlovable had to have come from someone other than God. And usually it came from in our environment, of which our parents were a large part. But it could also come from our, you know, going to school and being taught, told that we're not lovable and so forth. could come from there. But when we're told we're not lovable, we eventually start telling ourselves the same message. And the problem with telling ourselves the same message is we don't feel the feeling and let go of the feeling. Do you follow me? Because we're telling ourselves a lie. Whenever you say to yourselves, I am not lovable, you're basically telling yourself a lie from God's perspective. Does that make sense? So it's one thing to feel that you are not lovable. It's quite another thing to reinforce that belief by telling yourself that you're not lovable over and over again. Now many of you will feel you're not lovable and until you feel that completely, you will believe that you're not lovable. But you need to understand from an intellectual perspective that actually, from God's perspective, everyone's lovable. So you need to understand that even the belief, I am not lovable, is actually a false belief. It's in you now, but it's a false belief. It's a feeling that has to come out, so the only way a feeling can come out is by feeling it, but it's still a false belief. And that's what you need to realise. Now, shame is the kind of feeling that where, where you feel so bad about yourself and you believe that everything that was done to you is your fault. Does that make sense? So this is the primary feeling about shame, that everything that was done to you was your fault in some way. And what I'm constantly reminding people is that, no, things that are done to you that are unloving are not your fault. It doesn't matter what condition of your soul was, they're not your fault. Because if somebody does something unloving to you, that is their fault, their responsibility, their shame, if you like, not yours. If you believe it's yours, you're, it's highly unlikely you'll f let yourself feel it. Because there'll be no point to feeling it because you believe that you are shameful. When you understand that actually this shame was projected at you by another and it was their belief of you, you can now focus on that feeling that that was their belief of you or about you rather than your belief about yourself. Does that make sense? Yeah. Now, we're getting very intellectual here already, but some of you, just me acknowledging that much of your feelings are not actually your real... like they're not yours, that you, they're not you didn't cause them. The, the, the real cause of most of our feelings when we're a child, in particular this is, is our own families generally or adult acquaintances, their projections upon us. That's the real cause of the majority of our feelings as a child. Now when we grow up and we become an adult, now we are self-responsible beings, so whatever we project onto others that is unloving, that is our shame. No, that's not theirs. So there are times when you, at the moment, you think as an adult where you feel like, that person's a terrible person, you're judging the person. Well, that's your judgment, that's not theirs. That's your shame. That's your unloving behaviour. And this is what we've got to learn to stop, is learn to stop our own loving behaviour, but feel about all unloving behaviour that's been perpetrated towards us. Let, let it all go, in other words. Does that help, Angela? Yeah? Okay. Thank you. If we go across to Selena.